Hi students, I am in front of the lathe machine. You can see to my left hand is the headstock of the lathe and to my right is the tailstock and this is the tool post and you can see this is the bed on which these three are mounted. This is the chuck which is three jaw chuck and a chuck key which is used to open and close the jaws of the chuck so we have taken the workpiece out so now I will I'll fix it again on the chuck by using the chuck key so I'm fixing the jaws by using the chuck key make sure that we tight it nicely and make sure this chuck key should be kept at a safer place this is the tool post where the tool is already fitted and a chuck with a tailstock and chuck and a drill bit is fitted on the tailstock this is the handle which is being used to move the drill bit and we have two handles that is the longitudinal handle which gives the longitudinal movement and the lateral handle which gives the lateral movement to the tool again is the workpiece the longitudinal feed is it moves on the guideways of the bed now everything is ready so I will start the machine to start the plane turning operation which I would like to explain my students so first what I have to do I have to give the longitudinal feed I have to make sure that tool tip that is the single point cutting tool should touch to the workpiece and give the depth to the tool then I can move slowly the longitudinal handle you can see the chips coming out of the specimen make sure that uh, you wear the glasses and wear the proper gear like apron and the helmet to protect to prevent yourself from any kind of injury and these chips are very hot and they are flying and make sure you wear the goggles to prevent the eye injury so this is what I am doing right now the plane turning operation you can see the chips flying in a very nice manner now again I can give some feed that is the longitudinal lateral feed then moving the longitudinal handle to remove the unwanted material from the surface of the cylindrical workpiece my dear students right now I am working on the workpiece which is made of mild steel and I am using a cutting tool which is of HSS material so to show you on another surface we can see the different varying dyes coming out which is this operation is called step turning and now I am doing one more step showing you how we can do the, remove the material so first we have to give the longitudinal the lateral feed sorry then we have to move the handle longitudinally to remove the unwanted material so this is the, the procedure which we have to follow normally we does these operations by using the coolant material because when the two interfaces meet that is the cutting tool and the workpiece a lot of heat is getting generated which affects 
the surface of the work piece as well as the cutting tool tip so to prevent that we should use the coolant which takes off the heat from the interface of the workpiece and the tool so see the nice chips coming out and we have to do this operation by moving the longitudinal handle smoothly slowly and continuously these are the three things which we need to remember to have a smooth finished surface now to do the final touch for this plane turning operation I am doing the final touch see how the chips are coming out very beautifully and this is the last step which I will plane turn now so what I said students we have to give the feed by using the longitudinal as well as the transverse handles so these are the two handles which we are using for the plane turning now I'll switch off the machine because it is almost done now you can see the surface very smooth surface you can see all the steps three steps which has been machined so thank you very much for watching me for this video for next videos I'll show the thickness of this metal sheet like this we have 
it tells us the gauge number it shows us the gauge number like this so this gauge helps us to check the gauge we have one more tool that is we have this is called the divider divider we use this divider to to mark the arc if we are supposed to mark the arc on a metal sheet we use this divider like this we use this divider or if we are supposed to make a circle make a circle we use this divider we have one more tool that is this tool we are using here this tool we are using here this is again a marking tool this marking tool we are using here for marking the straight lines suppose we have to mark a straight line subscriber and this subscriber and this is the divider once you have uh, marked the uh, metal sheet then we go for the operation that operation is known as shearing operation so we will go for the shearing operation the shearing operation is done with the help of the shearing tool this is called snip this is the shearing tool which is used for the shearing operation see what i will do i have marked this metal sheet then i put the snip on the marked path i put the snip on the marked path and i start shearing in engineering language we call cutting shearing so i have now use the snip and see how i i am doing the shearing so i have i have i have i have cut this metal sheet by using the shearing tool that is snip okay so once i have uh, cut it cut i have cut it then i have to deform it because if i am supposed to make a round cylindrical shape out of this suppose i have to make it they have made they have made so many things like this they have made so this shape is obtained this shape we obtain the state i am putting this metal sheet on this state then i deform it using the mallet like this when i put it here i deform it it gets deformed with the help of this state once i deform it then i have to i have to join the edges i have to join these edges so what i am using i am using the drilling on this drilling machine i put it on drilling machine then i make a drill here so i have made a drill here suppose i make one more drill here like this i have made a drill here so this is i have made a drill here and i i also make drill on the another piece which i have to join with this so then i use these rivet these are the rivet which i use here so then i insert the rivet in this hole here when i insert here and from the another side we have the shank and tail then i use one more tool that is hammer so this is the riveting hammer i i hammer this from the another side and one more head gets generated and by generating that head we join the edges permanently this is how we uh, make the job in sheet metal uh and spray painting assalamu alaikum students i am your sir zubur sir i am the workshop superintendent today we are going to do the foundry in foundry class so as i said i am the superintendent workshops this video purpose of this video is to make you familiar with the shop and what we what do we do in the shop so let me first make you understand what does foundry means foundry is a shop where we cast things we cast metals we cast so many metals like aluminum brass cast iron and many more things the purpose is to manufacture to manufacture as well as using the metal 
So we bring the metal into the molten state in the foundry. So we bring the metal into the molten state and then that molten metal is poured into a cavity which is being created in the foundry by using the different kinds of metal. Sand has been already screened. Now I'll screen the clay and the ratio has been kept.
by using the stepped pattern and a gate has been cut with the help of the screw and the pouring basin. I will say the mold is ready for pouring. Now I realign the two flasks that scoop and drag for the pouring. So let us start the realignment of the two. You can see uh, the metal has turned into liquid state. So we have to wait for some more time to get it fully liquidified. So aluminium. So there is on the surface there is some slag left which I will remove later on before pouring into the mold cavity. So it will maybe take five more minutes to get prepared. Now, This is my past which I was planning for the pattern which I have used and this is Supro version and runner and this is my end product. Hi students, I am your sir, Zabur sir. Today we are in fitting and benchwork workshop. And today I will talk about the fitting and benchwork. What does it mean? What are the various tools which we are using? And what are the various processes? And what do we do at the end? And how does the work looks at the end? So these will be the topics which will be handled in this video lecture. So be with me and stay with me. Okay, let's first talk about what is the fitting and benchwork workshop. In fitting and benchwork workshop, we basically made the things to fit with each other, to give the things desired shape and size so that they can fit with each other. What does it mean? If I have this specimen in my hand, it has a groove, it has a recession, that recession is a B recession. And what does we do in the fitting? We made a part, this is the male part of it so that this male part of it fits in the other part. So that is what is the goal in the fitting shop to make the specimens, to make the work pieces in such a way so that they can fit with each other. That is the purpose of the fitting and patchwork workshop. Okay, what are the various tools which we use to obtain this, these shapes, these different shapes the most important tool which we use in the workshop, in the bench work and fitting workshop, that is these different kinds of files. So I have a different types of files in my hand. So let me first introduce this file. So this file is used to file the object to its finished shape to remove the unwanted material, to give the specimen the desired shape. That is the job of a file and the file is being used to do the operation. That operation is called filing operation. Okay, let me now describe the various types of files 
which we are using. This is called the round file. It is in round shape. Okay. Now another file. This is called square file because it has a square shape. So these descriptions are on the basis of structure of the file. And one more file. This is called the flat file because this file is flat. That is the reason it's called flat file. Again, I'm saying these descriptions are on the basis of structure of the file. And another file, this is the triangular file because it is having the triangular shape. And this is round, semi semi round file or half round file. So this is the half round file which we are using in in this cutting shop. So this is the very important tool which are going to be used in the fitting shop okay then what is the next most important tool in the fitting shop that is the cutting operation we cut the specimen so for that purpose we use the hacksaw so this hacksaw has a blade and it has a frame so this hacksaw is being used to cut the specimen for the desired size and the shape and this is again a very important cutting tool used in the fitting shop and one more important tool that is the measuring tool so this is used for measuring the right angles so this is called the tri square see the tri square so it is used to check the trueness of the workpiece and the angle of the workpiece for 90 degree angles this is to be used as called as tri square okay this is what is for the measuring and one more thing which we are using for the measuring that is the steel rule the so steel rule is again a measuring tool which is used to measure the specimens different various dimensions and one more thing that is the marking tool so this is the dot punch which is used to uh, give, uh, give the dot punch to the various dimensions which are being already marked and then comes the scriber which is giving the permanent lines on the work specimen with, with, with the help of this scriber we are giving the various drawing the various lines on the specimen so one more important tool that is the cross pin hammer so this cross pin hammer is used along with the dot punch when we are going to mark the dots on the work piece fine then there is one more uh, the tool that is called the uh, divider so this divider or the compass this is going to mark the radiuses arcs and other dimensions so again this is my marking tool so this is to be used to mark the various circles or the arcs and for drilling we are using if we have to drill a hole so we are using a tool that is called a drill bit and after drilling the hole if we would like to do the threading of internal threads on that hole then we are using this is called the tap and this is called the tap wrench so this is together being used to create the internal threads in the already drilled hole so these are the various tools which I am able to understand and there are some more tools which I want to make you understand that is this work bench so sorry this is uh, voice bench voice so this bench voice is the tool which is used to hold the work specimen so this is my specimen so this is made of MS steel flat iron steel and this voice is used to hold this specimen for various types of operations and this voice has two jaws one is the movable jaw this is the movable jaw and it has a fixed jaw so we hold the workpiece in between the two jaws which is one is this one is fixed jaw and this one is the movable jaw okay so how does we do the various kinds of operations let me just demonstrate the very basics of the operations so we are taking the workpiece and on the workpiece 
we are measuring the various dimensions let us say we are measuring the dimensions so we are keeping so the scale here and then we are using the scriber to mark the line so see to mark the line so this line needs to be cut so now what we what do we do we hold the we hold the workpiece and the voice and we make this voice should be tightened very really. then after after holding the workpiece then what do we do we take an hacksaw and we cut this section so there are two strokes see this is the position which we need to take care of so there are two strokes forward stroke and the backward stroke so one one stroke is forward stroke is working stroke and the backward stroke is the idle stroke so this is how we are cutting so you can see this is how we have to use this hacksaw as i said there are the two strokes one is the forward stroke and one is the backward stroke the forward stroke is the backward stroke and the backward stroke when the hacksaw this blade moves from from this position to this position this is called the backward stroke when the hacksaw moves from this position to this position this is called the forward stroke so this is about the hacksaw how it is being used then how do we use the files as i said this is used to remove the unwanted material from the workpiece so this is how we have to hold the file this is a file this is a flat file and i am just keeping the uh, palm of my left hand on the file and pressing it towards the workpiece okay. so this is how we have to use again in this also there are one is the forward stroke and one is the backward stroke again in this condition the forward stroke is the cutting stroke and the backward stroke is the idle stroke so slowly and slowly uh, uh, steadily we have to find this up to the required dimensions so this, you can see a material has been removed from the surface of the workpiece so now let me now tell you how we can use the how we can use the tri square so tri square as i said this is to be used to measure measure the trueness so we have to keep it like to the surface the surface which we have prepared the surface which we have prepared and to draw the lines now this line if i am drawing this line we know this is uh, this is at 90 degree to 90 degree angle so so it is to be used like this and one more use of it is to check the trueness of the surface so the light should not pass through when it is moving along the workpiece if the light is passing that means the surface is not true so this is how we have to use this tri square okay this is what the cause for this class i hope you understood the purpose the means of this workshop very important workshop as far as the workshops is concerned it is the amalgam of the shops this is one amalgam that is the fitting and patchwork workshop thank you very much for watching me and being with me thank you very much today we are going to do one more shops that is carpentry and pattern making section about carpentry you know that is when you work on the wood using different types of tools so we work on the wood with the help of different tools let me 
introduce the various tools which we use for the wood working processes this is the wood in my hand we have to measure this wood and we measure using this steel rule one more tool is there this is a triscale this triscale is used for checking the angle angle of the wood here if we want to check angle this angle must be 90 degrees so this is the triscale one more tool we use this is the cutting tool this is called saw because when you uh, take a wood piece you you measure it then you mark it for marking you use the pencil either you can use pencil or you can use uh, sometimes we use uh, also scribers you can see you see it here i can show you this this is the wood i just use the scribers here see i have marked it here so i have measured then i have marked it now next thing i have to cut this for cutting i have to hold this uh, wood uh, into the holding tool that is the carpentry vise here this is the carpentry vise the special vise in which we hold this work piece then we cut it see i am just showing you how to hold this work piece so this is the work piece here so i will hold it in the carpentry vise then i will fix it here see next i will do the cutting tool here this is the saw we have different types of saws uh, this is the this this is a simple rip saw we call it rip saw this is the uh, cooping saw cooping saw we call it and this one more saw this is the tenon saw you see it so different types of saws we have based on their uh, tooth profile and uh, their uh, shape we classify them right so i will use the rip saw so after marking i will show you how to cut this work piece you know uh, when we use the saw the saw has got forward stroke and backward stroke you, know? you see so if i use this saw uh, i am using the saw for cutting the wood and uh, the teeth of this saw have the forward stroke and backward stroke characteristics that is one stroke is the working stroke and one is the idle stroke see so our uh, this is a backward stroke here this backward stroke here is there is there work stroke see so once i have i have cut this i have then what next is here you know to apply not force it will like to go smoothly and it will cut the work piece it will cut the work piece means it will cut the work piece see i will now take it out from the bench box see i have uh, cut it to some extent i can i can shoot here like this this how we uh, cut the wood to get a saw so i can show you this is i have cut this uh, wood into two halves or into two pieces you see here we can make so many uh, joints this is one of the joints uh, we have made from this if you see this 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 joint this is mortise and tenon joint this is mortise part this is tenon part so this is how we have made from these two pieces using different tools so once i have cut this uh, then i have to do one more thing that is i have to uh, make mortise and tenon joint means i have to uh, i have to create a uh, hole here uh, 
uh, rather a rectangular hole I have to create here right now. So I will use here mortise chisel. So I will use the mortise chisel for creating the hole. I will show you this uh, how I will uh, hold this. So the type of hammer I am using right now this is the cross pin hammer. You see it is a pin. This cross pin with respect to the handle this is cross pin. So I will use this chisel like this. This is chisel. This is hammer. You see like this like this then I will go like this so one more chisel I have uh, here that is this firmer chisel in, it, in order to remove the uh, remove the material from the surface surface of this uh, workpiece uh, I, I will use the uh, chisels and uh, different chisels I am using firmer chisel then I am using the mortise chisel to create a create a hole here in this uh, wood we use the uh, special type of drilling tool that is the gimlet tool. See how I will use this gimlet tool. So this is the process how I use. So this gimlet drill is used for creating the uh, drill in the work piece. See how it works. So when I am applying pressure on this and by the help of this pressure uh, we get the hole created in the wood. This is how we have created the hole. So, the gimlet drill is used for creating the hole. We can use sometimes a drilling machine also for creating the hole. So, this is how we use the manual way this gimlet drill. So, this is I have created the uh, hole here. So, uh, in order to remove the, uh, the roughness of the hole, sometimes. I, I am using the file that is the round file I use sometimes so this is how I have created drill in the workpiece one more thing is there if order, in order to remove the, remove the surface roughness I am using one more operation that is the planing operation so planing operation is done with the help of the uh, planing tool this is the iron jack plane so iron jack plane is the planing tool and how we uh, use this uh, planing tool again I will fix this in the in the carpentry wise, mm -hmm. I'll fix in the carpentry wise then. Then I fix it here. So I use this. See, so by using this iron jet plane we remove the uh, surface roughness and we create the smooth surface by this iron jet plane you may have observed it in your day to day lives uh, from the joinery experts and rather the carpenter you may have seen using this so this is how we have uh, uh, created this smooth surface here so this way I have uh, uh, made you aware of the uh, carpentry shop uh, in which we create any type of the shape of any size. It has been mentioned it is carpentry and pattern making because uh, we use the wood for making the pattern which you may have already gone through. Uh, in foundry we use the pattern. This pattern is prepared from this wood using different processes. We use measuring process. We use marking process, we use cutting process, then you, we use mortising and tenoning, then we use drilling and boring, then we use surface uh, finishing using planing tools and this way you can easily uh, describe the carpentry shop and it is various operations used for creating different types of the forms of the wood. I hope you uh, enjoy this video. Thank you very much.